Now, but here with reaction to all of these developments out of Washington tonight, we are joined by Florida Congressman, also gubernatorial candidate, who I have said I want to win to be the next governor. And uh, Ron DeSantis is with us, sir. Okay, uh, I know these are just released. Uh, we're pouring through the 49 pages. We know the hatred Struck and Page have for President Trump. What do you got so far? Well, Sean, I, I think this is incomplete production. I mean, we know their texting habits of how often they were texting in other periods. And so this is the period December of 2016 during the Trump transition all the way up until the firing of James Comey and then the appointment of Robert Mueller as a special counsel. Yet there's only 40-some pages there. There's gaps. Some of the stuff is incomplete. So I don't think that this is a full production. I think there's more questions that this raises, and we're going to have to go back to the Justice Department and mm -hmm. ask them why they weren't able to recover the full struck page text messages. Congressman, my, I had multiple sources telling me tonight that they suspect that there were other devices used as well. Did you get that? Is that your interpretation looking at this? Yes, and, and we've also have reason to believe that they were using something called the clean Gmail, which is uh, everyone has access to the account and you just do messages in the draft and then respond to drafts so you're not actually sending emails. So yeah, there's a lot of things that they do using iMessage. So we've got to get all of that that we can get uh, for sure, but this is not it. I mean, Sean, you've documented these are lovebirds. They had all this hatred for the president. They were very quick to, to put their opinion opinions about everything that was going on and yet here you know you'll just see gap after gap so i'm not satisfied okay i want to i want to go to the issue how is it possible peter struck is in the middle of all of this he interviewed general flynn apparently didn't think he was lying how did he get charged then but also interviewed hillary clinton but that was in july of 2016 it was early may of 2016 where it was struck and comey himself writing an exoneration that actually used the standard, the legal standard that means Hillary would have broken the law. They changed the wording to take that part out. And the original drafting also had in that multiple foreign intelligence agencies had hacked into Hillary Clinton's email server. And that means top secret, classified, special access programming information was in fact obtained by America's enemies and none of it would have been redacted, sir. So if you were somebody who was on Hillary's campaign team at the time and you could have suggest changes to be made to that statement, you would have suggested exactly the changes that Peter Strzok insisted on to try to reduce Hillary's level of recklessness and her culpability. And so he was involved in the thick of that case. And here's, I think, why it's so uh, troubling with, with Strzok's conduct. What does he do after Comey exonerates Hillary? A couple weeks later, he opens up a collusion case against the Trump campaign based off what we now know was a two-page document with no actual intelligence. And then eventually they supplemented it with a fake dossier paid for by the Democrats. But Strzok was the prime driver, not only behind exonerating Hillary, but then pursuing this collusion fairy tale. And that ultimately led to the appointment of Mueller. Unbelievable. Uh, Congressman, we are not going to let up. This is, there are apparently 50,000 of them and apparently 1.2 million pages that the inspector general has that Congress needs to get. And, and I'm just urging Congress, if they don't hand them over soon, you must hold these people in contempt and worse. Without you, question. All right, Congressman, thank you.